surprising how little we know about the Magi. We think that we know them. We've heard stories since we were children. You've been to Cologne Cathedral, you know that they have the relics of Caspar, Melchior and Balthazar in there. We think, by tradition, we know where they come from. One comes from India, one from Persia, one from another place in the East. We feel that we know them. But where do we get all this information? We don't. We know absolutely nothing about them. We don't know how many there were. We don't know where they came from. We don't know even if there were just three of them. But I find myself wondering very much, perhaps with the news coming from Syria and Iraq and Iran in the past few days, what exactly they were like. What they had to give up to go and follow and find the Christ child. As we think of them, as rich. We think of them crossing through the deserts on camels. We think of them with great trains of people. We think of them travelling together or alone. Again, we don't know. Tradition is that they meet up at some point, having come from three separate places. We don't know. Were they rich? We assume so because they offer gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. We don't know. It might be like the widow, they give their everything, they give their last might because they want to pay homage to the king, not just of the Jews, but of the whole world. What did they have to give up to go and find the baby Jesus? Did they give up wives, families, leave them behind? And for how long? Those journeys weren't safe in those days just as journeys in the Middle East aren't safe now. Did they have to give up young children, leave them behind, because something more important came into their lives? Were they travelling safely? Did they have guards? Did they have security? We don't know. There's so much about this feast that we do not know, and yet what it points to is the call of Christ points to his call so clearly that he is calling across the world, come and find me, come and adore me, come and do me homage. And so no matter what is going on in their lives, they leave it behind. At what cost? That call is exactly the same to you and to me. And perhaps at times we resist it. We don't want to be called. We don't want to have to go and do things that we don't feel comfortable with. And so we put it to the back of our minds. We put the call to church, the call to grace, the call to Christ to one side. There are other things which are more important. And yet think today of Iraq, Iran. Think especially of the Christians in Iraq. How are they going to be now? having to face even more increased danger than before. And yet, they are unwavering in their following of Christ. How would we be under the same circumstances? If we were called to follow Christ under oppression, under the threat of violence, under the threat of martyrdom, would we? Could we? The kings, the magi, the wise men, whatever we call them, didn't know what they were getting into, but still they followed. They followed the light to the Christ child. The Christians of the Middle East know exactly what they're getting into, and yet still they follow the Christ child. And we here in Ingrid Barwick, in Yarm, in Middlesbrough, do we take stock of the cost it costs us to follow Christ? Do we sit down and think? Could I do more? Should I do more? Does he demand more of me? Because Christ is demanding. He never leaves us where we are. He asks us to move ever further onward, deeper into him. So let us be addressed tonight by the child in the manger yet again, and let us follow the light that he gives to each one of us to follow bravely where he wants us to go. <laughs>